Hello world, I'm glad to be back here today and this is um, a pre-airing of my one year anniversary on MNN. I want to let you know that one year ago this, this month I started on this journey and with me today will be the ladies of Honeysuckle Magazine which these ladies have been so instrumental in my growth they don't even realize it since i met them a couple months ago they've put about four or five of my poems in their magazine and they do better at marketing me than i do and we'd like to introduce you to roni hi jamie hello and naomi hello okay and i want you to know that they, they, they asked me, um, they, they're honored to, to be here. I'm honored to have them here. I'm honored to have them to want to, to put me in their magazine. It was just like a chance meeting. I was helping someone else to, to do a show, and I met them, and we went from one thing to another, and we've been friends ever since, and I hope to carry that on. Forever and ever. Okay, Ronit, yeah. let me ask you, what have, what's the, your proudest shining moment with uh, Honeysuckle Magazine to date? Well, I guess <laughs> um, my proudest moments are carrying on when no one else was with me. So you started this all by yourself in the beginning? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. I, um, yeah, I started it, yep, and then through the years, there have been people who come and go, and then it's the tenacity of the vision, right? You just got a whole yeah, tight. so you just want to keep it going <laughs> no matter what. Yep. I can understand that. Sometimes yeah. you're at the bottom <laughs> looking up. You wonder, should I, should I go on? But then something happens, and you just Yeah, some spurs you, you on. It says, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, and what? Uh, what special do you see in your future? Um, you know, I think um, <clears throat> one of the things I'm most excited about is bringing spirituality and sort of like a new language to the mainstream. So, if, What kind of new language? Um, I think, you know, people who are inspired, who work from a place of inspiration or okay. being creative or just having a very open mind. Um, not necessarily like in a very linear fashion, but in a new way, more yeah. of a quantum way of thinking. That's very interesting because I think you have your creative types, and I consider myself a creative type, and I think different than, say, a linear or I usually call it like a numbers person. I think different than, than a numbers person and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think I think there should be more force creative types yeah. out there. Definitely. I'm honored that you want to bring something to us. Yeah. All right. For sure. No reason for us to suffer. Good. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? I am very well, thanks. How are you? <laughs> well, I'm not as well as you, but I try hard. Does that mm. count? Of course. Okay. Every little bit counts. Now, let me ask you, what have you brought to the magazine so far? No, first tell what you do for the magazine and then say what you've brought to the magazine. Okay, well, I'm the managing editor. Um. <laughs> the uh, wonderful, amazing, oh. both of them are amazing, amazing okay. managing editor. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of magic here. Um, you know, I came on really near the, the tail end of the HERS issue being completed, and I, I don't know, like there's, there's been a lot of momentum that's happened since then, but it's been a team effort. Um, I, I can't take credit for that, but I, I will say that Honeysuckle has really encouraged me to learn about things that I didn't think that I would be interested in or care about before. Mm. Um, the cannabis issue is a really good illustration of that because I, I've never smoked or consumed cannabis. Um, you never inhaled? 
but no, I I'm really not a consumer. Okay. In in that way, so when when Ronit said that she really wanted us to do a cannabis issue, I was kind of like, what? That uh, I don't understand why. But the more that we all had to learn about it, because because none of us are really habitual consumers, so it was new territory. And the more that we learned about the science of the plant, um, the way that the plant has been used historically, the unjust legal and illegality um, aspects surrounding cannabis use, it, it changed how I thought about it, um, such to the point that I was actually working another job while we were producing the cannabis issue. And when they found out that I was involved with this, they fired me. Really? Because they, they were scared that cannabis is federally illegal. What kind illegal. of work was it? Um, it was a nonprofit. I can't mention its name, okay. but it, it was a nonprofit where they worked with children. I was not in a role where I worked with children at all, but they were somehow afraid that the association of me with reporting on cannabis, so writing about it, not not having anything to do with the sale, with the plant, with the product, but simply reporting on it would be too dangerous for the people that they served. You see people, these, you see the stupidity and the <laughs> ignorance that goes on this, <laughs> in, in all forms. We're not the only one that, that, that goes through this nonsense. <laughs> That's a shame. That, oh my God. See, those are the things that burn me up right there. Let me ask you something. Um, how long before she started it did you come on board? Oh, it's been pretty recently that I've come on oh, board. Oh, so you just so you you brand new? Um, not brand new. Not September brand new. 2017 was when I came on okay. fully. Um, I had written a bit for Honeysuckle. So it was part time then. in the beginning. Um, it was I would say like May June of 2017 is when I started contributing writing, and okay. then around August we were having conversations about if I should come on more fully than that, and would that make sense, and where would I fit? Um, but when it feels right, it feels right. So we took the leap together. Well, that other job gave you no choice. You, you <laughs> gotta keep going right. forward now. <laughs> well, that was, that was about a month ago that that happened, so it's still new, but I remember when it did happen, one of my friends said to me, well, I wouldn't necessarily think of you as a cannabis advocate. And I said, well, before this issue, I wouldn't have either. <laughs> Success. Success will overcome that by all means. Aww. Okay, Naomi. <laughs> so um, I've been working with Ronit for about a year now. I started in uh, May 2017 with this issue, the home issue. And what happened was we, we had to put it together from scratch because we had a, a whole editorial team that defaulted on us. They defaulted, really? But we worked together before that. Yes, yeah, we so. had worked together. Um, we, we've known so each other since 2015. So in the beginning, were you part-time? Well, uh, it almost defied category because <laughs> I was... You were there when I she was, needed. I went from zero to 100% very quickly because we, we had to create this magazine. Okay. In 10 days, and, right? Like what 10 days. We yeah, had we had about 10 days to put this together. Wow. And um, I'm, a, I'm a book publisher, so I had the equipment to do it. And we, we were basically working round the clock to get it done. But what excited me was kind of finding a new way to convey information using um, visual impact mm -hmm. and, and um, really uh, kind of allowing myself to almost sculpt the pages with color mm. and with size. And we're still really working out that template and, and trying to convey information through different um, means. Like for example, in the cannabis issue, I have a timeline about the history of cannabis mm -hmm. in human life from you know uh, 12,000 really years ago to the present. And it's kind of a, mm -hmm. a comic and it's kind of a, um, an infographic. And that, that really excites me because some of our articles are very 
classically presented just in three columns of type with an image mm -hmm. and other times we really have taken oh, she did. liberties and used full pages yeah. in unusual ways and I, I kind of feel that that will express Ronit's goal of kind of giving um, it, providing a new kind of vocabulary for different kinds of readers. Okay. Marvelous. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Jamie in our last interview put it that um, the study at Yale where they talk about art, sciences, oh, yes. and literature. Yes. So there, so I went to a show where they then had to talk back afterward with a group from Yale that does a program where they put the literature art and science students and religious studies students all together and have them study in the same classes. Because mm -hmm. the idea is that art and science and spirituality can all go together. And if we can learn how to integrate all these things into our lives, then we'll be able to understand each other better. Was that on TV? Um, no. I think I saw that. Well, in our, our interview was, maybe you watched it. Okay. I don't know. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, the, the podcast, yeah. The okay. live stream. That was live stream. But Naomi didn't mention she's um, the founder and owner of a wonderful indie press called Heliotrope Books. Called who? Heliotrope Books. Heliotrope Books. That's right. She's busy. But Did I ever write you? I used to about, <laughs> about uh, four years ago, I was at the, um, they had a Brooklyn um, press fair. A Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Book Fair. Yeah, Brooklyn Book Fair. And that's when I was, I, was, I was trying to get published about my poems. And I, I went to every publisher there. It's go harassing people. <laughs> I think poetry is difficult, right? It, poetry is very difficult to publish, yes. I had people tell me, oh, this, this, this is beautiful and, and everything. I said, so you gonna help me? No. <laughs> 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 okay. You'll find a way. <laughs> and since meeting you, it's like I've come to first because I wasn't even really thinking about it anymore, just thinking about the show, but I've come to Fervis, I've had, um, I even went to my publisher, my my poetry teacher, and showed him where you put me, he said, good thing for getting published. No. Like this, it wasn't none. Oh. It just shows you how the world, how, how things go. When I'm not thinking about it, then it happens. Well, when I was thinking about it and going out and trying to make it happen, it didn't happen. Life is so crazy. So, but what you gonna do? Yeah. yeah, and oh, I guess oh, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say. I mean, that's something that I've realized since I've been working with Honeysuckle is that things come to you at the time that they're supposed to, and you just you can't really nail yourself down to a specific timeline of how things need to happen for you. You just have to let them happen and believe that they I know, are going to be there. I think they're taking too long. What? Things. I think they've taken too long. I agree. I sort of feel yeah. sometimes like, hey, you know, am I going to be an old hag by the time they start yeah. happening here? I'm going to be, you know, well, walking up now. with a cane and <laughs> my, you know, nose will be up to here. And, when you, you make know, your first million. So, exactly. So, so, and my so arms will be dangling. And so I'm like, oh, wow, I've made it, attitude. you know. <laughs> you could have a sugar baby. Just, just wait for it. It's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, not to... <laughs> Well, I think I think there's a combination of wait for it and find how you can be proactive about it. Um, I don't know. I find that when when you don't concentrate on it and you move on to something else, then it falls into place. Hmm. Like um, the studio and my poems and meeting y'all. Well, you got to so, plant the seeds, but then maybe let it go and let it happen. Yeah. That's that's because then when I when I was when I was concentrating on it, nothing happened. Then I wasn't thinking about it, and then she said she was starting a black issue. I said, Well, I have poems you might be interested in. And then from there, it yeah. went. Well, looking through these magazines, I realized, you know, we have such a great team. Like Naomi's a visual artist too. 
So she has like her collages in here and artwork she contributes. Jamie's brilliant. My boyfriend's a photographer, so he contributes great photos. Yes, he, he, he did the cover, the cover photo. For cannabis. Yes. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and then we together we now he's becoming kind of working with Naomi and I to put it together from an art direction point of view, which I think is interesting. Fantastic. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How long does it take you to say put a magazine together? and put it together and get it out. It's like a month? I'd say three months. Three right? months? Mm -hmm. Although this one honestly was six weeks, remember? Yeah, we were on an accelerated calendar, but I'd say ideally we really need three months. The first month uh, is just kind of gestation and planning. Um, planning, it's very vague, and then it starts to become sharper and develop like that. We're at that point now with our next issue, which is about sustainability. Yeah. And, and once it gets sharper and becomes more in light, then you also see things you want to th th take out, like? That's probably the third phase. So if the first is the gestation, and then we start focusing and designing stories, and then when we get it all in, then you have to eliminate sometimes and then we put it together um, visually and that's where Naomi's the art director and comes in and so, does that. So does everyone do their their part and then you oversee all of it or everyone brings their part to the table and then you go through it there? How, what's that process like? Um, it's pretty collab, it's pretty much collaborative. Like I think everyone has distinct strengths okay. and we kind of know that about one mm -hmm. another. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and we respect that for the most part, you know, so it vibes really well, but um, I'd say it's pretty equal collaboration. I mean, as a publisher, I guess I do have in a sense like final maybe veto, like if I really want or don't want, but I'd say it's pretty egalitarian for the most part. Like everyone has a different skill set that they bring, right? I think it's yeah. like that here too. It's like, I just sit here and talk and Brontus does the magic. <laughs> right, Brontus? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> well, and I'll also say it, it really takes a village on each issue, too, because, yeah. I mean, the, the three of us do a lot of, like, cobbling materials together, but we get so much material from wonderful writers, artists, photographers, um, people who want to give us their time and share their stories with us. And many of these people are very acclaimed in their field. They're incredible So you have name, name people working with you. Yeah, but they, but they come to Honeysuckle because they believe in what, what the message doing. is. Okay. And they Good. also know that it's a, it's a safe place to share their stories. And, you know, I think there are a lot of other outlets that don't give people platforms mm. with that kind of openness. And security. Why? And why? Why is that? You think? I think. I think part of it does have to do with the corporatization of uh. media, um, the need for clickbait, which of course everybody wants to get their stats up, um, or they have advertisers that they have to answer to, which you know we do have advertisers, but it's it's much more of a collaboration than it is an obligation to them. Yeah. I think too, like people seem to only do what they've seen done. Like they, they fall into a mold, I think in general, I, you know. I've always said that um, I don't wanna do, do anything like that. I'm, I'm willing to, I wanna do what I, ha I haven't seen done. You know what I'm saying? It's like, a lot of times it's like, I'll ask Brontus, well, why can't we do it like, like this? I, I wanna do things different. I want, I want people, cause when you're, when you're like channel surfing, you have a second to like stay on here. That's why I like my rotating Black Lives Matter that and everything else, I want I want to be different because what I want when you're channel surfing, I want you to stop. I want to, I gotta hold you, grab you, and bring you in. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I want to do different things. I don't want to do what everyone else does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a fine line. Like I, you know, I think Jamie kind of has her nose or eye to the 
like that what it takes to get to the mainstream and you do have to attract people to read your stuff but yeah. I think we definitely slip in stuff that we care about I mean it's organic stuff that we care yeah, want to put out there you, yeah you gotta you 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 put something to to get the masses then you also slip in a little something on the side yeah mm -hmm. I mean we're probably yeah. maybe more even the majority of like yes. real stuff definitely mm -hmm. yeah it's a <laughs> It's a balancing act. Yes. It's a balancing act. Because there's a point where our interests and the mainstream interests do naturally intersect. And I think that Jamie's got a very good knack for knowing where that is. And, 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 we, and you do, too. You mm -hmm. know. And you do. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's also... Now I see why y'all work so well together. Y'all yeah. just kind of busy. Oh, so sweet. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's also just knowing, too, what's what's good to share with a large audience. Because, um, you know, I had a conversation. But does everybody know what's good to share? We, or is, or is I think that it's the way you frame process? it, too. Because, like, we'll have, like, a very raw, maybe raw material that's hard to read. And then Jamie on social media or in the intro will frame it in a way that's very digestible and engaging for anyone. Yes. So she brings that out, you're saying. Oh. She can frame it for people so that then they can read and form their own opinions, but at least it'll bring them in. Whereas, really? like, you have that kind of talent? I, I certainly try, although, you know, yes, I said... Yes, she does. Obviously, yeah. you're doing a great she job. Does. Like, I would do one sentence, like, read this, you know, and she'll just have this, like, thing that people and can she'll understand. Go, she'll carry it from there. Yeah. Okay, that's, yeah, that's I mean, a great I, skill. I do, I do mm -hmm. have my, my niche interests, too, which, you know, I mean, I've realized in being part of this team that, like, there's, there's a place for those, but there's also a place to to really expand my own comfort zone and find out, well, why is everybody so excited about cannabis? Why is everybody so interested in sustainability? And you're learning mm -hmm. as, as you go, too, mm -hmm. yeah. It really, it's like going to school every issue, but it's fun because it's hands-on. Okay, beautiful. That's so lovely. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, we definitely have our moments, and it's hard. At times, <laughs> but it's it's good. Are they few and far between? Yes, yeah. yes. I mean, we're real people, you know. Of so you are. every day is if someone has a struggle, if it's not through honeysuckle, something else, you know. But from what I see here, y'all have um, a good understanding. Y'all get along very well, mm -hmm. you know, you. and that's something you can't fake. You yeah. Know, either, either you do or you don't. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Good point. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're all honest, and I think that that's another. I believe part that's very important. Honeysuckle is it? It is about a certain self honesty and being honest with your readers, and you know uh, that I think that we that it's it's a strength and a weakness because sometimes it's hard to hear other people's honesty, but um, it's what is ultimately going to get you through anything. And make you grow. Yes, mm -hmm. and make you grow and think and reflect. And then integrate the different strands that sometimes, you know, fall out of line with each other. What about you? What about to me? Well, do you work with people you, have you had good experiences with people you work with? Or probably a little bit of both, huh? Let me see. Um... You talking about doing this? Just in general. I mean, I've had terrible experiences working okay, with people. Okay, well, <laughs> let's put it like this. In general, I do, um, I do, I, I do, do cooking, hmm. and I, I work with a, a temporary agency, and I don't really have to get. Um, really close or uh, anything like that because I don't have to ever be there again. And there's many places I have went to that I haven't went back to. There was one guy that, that he told me I cut tomatoes too slow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he said, you won't, you won't, he said, you don't have to worry about coming back. I said, you don't have to worry about me coming back. Matter of fact, I can leave now if you want. And see, I, I speak my mind. It's like 
The most important thing to me at this date and time is my show. I live for my show. Everything is about the show now. I consider my life is, for now, only thing I got to do is critical investigative thinking. And I analyze people and what they do and how they do it. And if I do that, it'll make a better make for a better show f for me, or better talking points while I'm doing my show, or I can show people things better. That's what I feel. So I'm like an observer of life. I was looking for Naomi's other cat um, collage, but oh, I already showed the other one. I'll find it. Where was that woman one? It's with it's the orgasm article. You have an orgasm article. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh my God! Does that show the G spot? Well, it's more about uh, planet. Metaphorically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the people want to see that G spot. <laughs> the G spot, y'all. <laughs> It is. It's like the planets, right? Or how would yeah, you describe yeah. this? It's the solar system within the female body. Really? So it's like yeah, going around your the world anus. or something like that? <laughs> going around the cosmos in wow. one body. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> I think I've seen enough. <laughs> we are actively looking for advertisers and sponsors for our next print issue which is going to be called Sustain. It's about sustainability, planetary wellness, the environment. It's going to be a fantastic issue, and it's coming out for June of 2018. So we are in production on it now. Um, you can check us out at HoneysuckleMag.com and also on social media, Honeysuckle Magazine, Twitter at Honeysuckle Mag. Um, and if you have an idea for us, please feel free to send us a pitch. We're always open to new stories, too. And uh, the email for the pitch would be? Uh, Jamie? It can be, yeah, it can be Jamie, J-A-I-M-E, at HoneysuckleMag.com. That'll go straight to me. Thanks. All right, world. This is celebrating my year anniversary of Now We Rise, Quest to Self-Determination. We're only going to get better from here. And I'll be back.